What's up guys, welcome to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at Tesla stock, ticker symbol TS. LA on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Thursday, May 16th. All right, guys, Tesla stock here today down on a big market green day, down $3.56 per share. That's minus 2.01%. In regular trading hours, it's up a little bit after hours. Take that with a grain of salt. Volume is very low. Listen, let's take a deep look at this thing, but let's do it as efficiently as possible. We'll look at the volume profile, do analysis on that, kind of taking a peek under the hood to pull out whatever bias is, is present in there, meaning bullish or bearish. We'll take a look at the psychological levels that a lot of money is paying attention to, so we need to as well by default. We'll look at implied volatility, the expected move for tomorrow, and we'll finish strong with the directional bias coming out of the chain for tomorrow. So let's get started here on the five-minute chart and just peel back a layer of that onion here and take a peek. Listen, by the way, if you guys are new here, Tesla's a daily upload, so I appreciate you subscribing to the channel, and I'll keep the videos coming daily now remember here at uh, one hour before the market opened this morning we had cpi inflation data so there's that pop we saw that across the broader market but we then saw a big sell-off off the open so let's you know kind of pull this up here and take a look at the volume what's interesting about this volume is that we saw the second candle exceed the original opening bar that's not entirely common but it's not so out of the ordinary considering we had a green bar to follow and then we kind of alternated from there. It's relatively contextual. This would be obvious bearish bias if we saw three, four, five consecutive elevated volume bars to the red side, but we quickly faded after that sell-off. So if anything, I would really only be comfortable assigning slight bearish bias to that bigger downside sell-off off the open, which I think is interesting. And then as we move through the day, we have a couple of green pops, a couple of red pops mixed in. They kind of wash each other out. Too much of a risk there uh, of randomness to assign anything. And then a relatively contextual close. This big green bar, by the way, you can see very little movement. That's the first bar after the close. That is going to be a fund and institution rebalancing bar triggered by algos on the closing bell. So I like to ignore that one. So listen, let's move on here. Let's take a look at the psychological levels, those self-fulfilling prophecy areas on the chart, starting with the very simple 30-minute. Now, you guys remember yesterday, right? We were talking about how we had just reclaimed the 200 period here on the 30-minute, and we were then above both. Well, today, unfortunately, we saw that 50 period cross over and become the more relevant immediate moving average, at least on this chart, as expected. We talked about that last night. We gave that up today on high volume. And from there, we actually tried to give up the 200 period as well. It was very sloppy, right? You can see right here, very, very sloppy respect. But we eventually bounced back up above, tested it heading into the close, and barely held. So listen, looking ahead to tomorrow, bears. Any upside test of the 50 period? I want to see that hold as resistance since we haven't really had a test of it yet. But the goal, if you're a bear is to break and hold this 200 period tomorrow, treating that as resistance, getting down below both. Bulls. Ideally, any retest of the 200 period, you want to see that hold as support. Because again, today was kind of sloppy. We haven't really proved ourselves around that area yet. But the goal tomorrow for bulls is to rip upside through the 50 period, retest it on low, low volume, and then Boom, high volume on the confirmation, treating that 50 period yet again as support. That would then put us above both of those, which is kind of the situation you want to be on as many time frames as possible. But of course, we'll go one at a time here. So specific to the 30 minute, that's the ideal scenario. Moving on to the four hour chart here, let's take a look. You can see guys, today we gave up the 50 period on the four hour. Remember yesterday we were talking about how it was great that we had just reclaimed the 50 after reclaiming the 200 just a day prior, well, now we gave up the 50 period and we now find ourselves halfway in between this channel. Now listen, the current state of this is we're about 1.9% away from that 200 period to the downside and about 1.35% from that 50 period to the upside. So listen, bulls, this is very similar to the, to the 30 minute now. The goal is to reclaim the 50 period as support. Ideally, right? Because we're now inside of a channel that's not, that's not the best scenario we could possibly have if you're a bull. Any downside test, this would be a nearly 2% red day, right? But we saw that today, so we have to talk about it. Any downside test of the 200 period? 
Priority number one if you're a bull is don't give that up. Ideally, if we test it, fine, but I want to see that hold as support. Bears, any test of the 50 period, I want to see that hold as resistance. I don't care what volume it would test on as long as we get a higher volume rejection. And really, the ideal scenario if you're a bear is to crack that 200 period to the downside and get beneath it, closing beneath it, ideally getting beneath it as early in the day as possible to allow a big sample size of, of volume to come in and agree that, hey, we belong below the 200 period today. Now, listen, guys, the most important chart of all is the daily. All right. Now, we had just kind of gapped a little bit higher, putting a little bit more distance in between the stock price and the, and the 50 period, the 50 day moving average, which, by the way, has a ton of eyeballs. This is a super common chart, which means that I want to be paying attention because I know that there's a lot of people making decisions and institutions making decisions around these areas. We have now given back some, of course, today, and we're just a few points away. We're, you know, about three points away from making a retest of that 50-day moving average. So listen, bulls, what I'm really watching is if we retest the 50-day, I don't want to give it up. If we do give it up, ideally hold 170 because the 50 days just above 170. Okay. It's currently at 170.87. But if we can hold the 50 day, whether that's bouncing from here or testing it and respecting it as support, the best scenario as a bull, at least one day scenario, it would be great to get above 180 and hold above 180 because every $10 increment on Tesla is kind of a psychological level. Right, especially at this price range. Now, bears, of course, we rejected off 180. Ideally, if we were to retest that, you'd want to see that hold as a rejecting a rejecting point. But bears, I think the ideal uh, scenario tomorrow would be to not only not only break the 50 day to the downside, but also getting beneath 170, because then you're looking at two psychological levels: 170 as a 10 dollar increment, and also the 50 day moving average um, of potential resistance back to the upside, which would put bears in a, in a good, very short term position. Now implied volatility guys, you can see here essentially flat today, still very low compared to the last three months. So make sure you're considering that if you are trading options, especially the Vega value currently baked into contracts is going to be very low compared to the last few months, especially. All right. Now expect and move. We do not have daily expirations on, on Tesla, but the next expiration we do have is Friday, May 17th. The expected move by then compared to today's close, uh, by Friday's close, I should say, compared to today's close is plus or minus $4.96 per share. Now, here's what we do. We divide that by two trading days left, Thursday and Friday, because we're trying to get tomorrow, right? And then what we usually do is add back 50% to make up for the fact that that assumes a green streak or a red streak into the end of the week, that gives us plus or minus $3.72 on Wednesdays, looking ahead to Thursday and Friday, I typically shave off a little bit. So I'm looking somewhere in the range of plus or minus $3 to $3.50 um, of movement, of expected volatility being priced in by the market. The reason that we're doing it this way is because first of all, we have to do educated guesswork here because there's no daily expirations. And second of all, on Wednesday nights, there's only two trading days left. Adding back 50%, while that makes sense early in the week, starts to become hard to justify with only two trading days left. That's why instead of 372, I tend to hang out in the range of, in this case, plus or minus three to 350. Here, uh, here on Tesla heading into tomorrow. That's the volatility expectation. Now you might be thinking, what about directional bias? Look at the volume here. 1.65 million contracts traded today. 976,000 calls. 676,000 puts. Call side bias here on a Tesla on the overall ratio. And if we go short-term speculators, that's 0 to 20 delta range, we have 468,000 calls and 185,000 puts. Pretty heavy call side bias out of the short term uh, speculators here today on Tesla. If you get value out of the daily Tesla uploads, guys, I appreciate you leaving a like on the video. That's all I ask. And then get out of here and enjoy your night. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.